Hi guys, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restoration with another short video on a vintage pachinko machine. Uh, we're real close to 400 on our way to 500, so please uh, down below click on the subscribe button. Help us out. And uh, I'd like to just real quick talk about the videos I make. Um, I make a video for every machine that I restore for a number of reasons. Um, quite often they're for a customer and as part of making the video and showing them what I've done to their machine, I also do the instructional part that you'll see at the end on how to load the machine, set it up and troubleshoot it, so on and so forth. Uh, also think that uh, there certainly is a, a small niche of people who enjoy just seeing the pachinko machines in action. Um, if there is any kind of uh, an instructional how-to kind of video that you'd like to see, by all means contact me and I'll see what I can do to make one up for you. I enjoy doing them. So with that said, this is uh, a 1972 Nisogen Model A recycler. Pretty machine. Again, complete restoration. Everything has been uh, taken off of the machine. Everything's been put back on. Uh, this, wait till you see this. This is the original play field. Uh, there's, there's literally no color, hardly at all, left in this thing. Um, let me bring it in and show you the play field. That's a, it's a very pretty play field, but obviously the colors have just faded away to nothing. Okay, so it definitely makes a difference. Uh, putting new play fields on your on your machines So one thing that uh, a couple of things on this machine there were some missing parts uh, Unfortunately, I had those parts. So we, we got a com basically a complete machine and at some point during its life this machine had oil um, Put into the mechanism. I know I've said it before. I'll say it again a hundred million times Pachinko machines were never designed to be lubricated. They were designed to work when they were clean so when I'm done with my machines or any other restorer for that matter, the machine should be squeaky clean and under normal use in a person's home these days, they simply aren't going to get loaded with the smoke residue and the body oils and the overall dirt um, that was present in the pachinko parlors 40 years ago. So they should remain flawless working uh, forever. Uh, there are two places I do use oil and one is on the uh, launch handle and the other one is on the ball bearing bracket on the back side. Uh, those are metal on metal parts and it's all right to put a very fine oil, a little drop of fine oil on those just to make sure that they're smooth. But um, any of the pivot points, things like that, do not oil them. All that does is uh, as the oil dries out, it gets like syrup and it just creates a place where, where dust is attracted and, it, and it'll bog things up. So, this is uh, the, the beautiful red mahogany wood. Um, I paint the metal on these just because I think it looks nice. Uh, the anti-theft stuff down in here. This one did not have a lock on it. Uh, previous owner, I guess, just decided to take the lock out. I happen to have a lock, so there is a lock in here now. It's basically non-functional. I mean, you open and close your uh, machine like that down here. And if you end up mounting it in a cabinet, this is something you have to be able to access. It also did not have a jackpot cover. Um, I had one and oddly enough, I've never seen a gray one. They're always white. And this one didn't actually fit flush. I mean, it, it fits, it, it, it uh, does the job it was intended to do, but uh, it's kind of odd that it fits cockeyed. So rewired everything, got everything working. Um, so, 12 volt power supply, we're just gonna plug it in here. And if you notice the ball out light immediately comes on, there are no balls in the Pachinko machine at all. Uh, two important things on a Model A. This is the most important. There's a little um, sticker over here that says shut and open. And you wanna make sure that this lever is up in the shut position. Um, you might be able to see this if I can bring this in. And I, I apologize if you can't, because I can't see what I'm looking at. But when you push down, the fingers come up. And when you lift up, the fingers go down. And with the fingers down, it keeps the balls in the jackpot chamber. When they're like that, it lets them go out the back of the jackpot chamber, travel down, and exit the machine. So you want to make sure that this is up 
and in the uh, what's called the shut position and that's the proper position to load and then you want to make sure that your seesaw is tipped to the left rather than tipped to the right okay so ball out light is on with a model a we fill this hopper the balls are going to immediately run down the metal uh, track into the turnaround down into the center hopper the recycling hopper until enough balls are in this and then it will stop the flow of balls here we'll see what i mean in just a second okay so this this has stopped the flow of balls into the center section. What that means is there's enough balls in the center section for the machine to pay out. Um, right now, actually, the, the uh, ball light is off, meaning there's enough up in here also. If I had put a few less in, this may have still been up enough that the, I'm sorry, it is down now. And the ball out light is still on. So we're gonna put a few more balls in until the weight of the balls pushes down on this and turns that light off. Now as the machine uses up the balls, this will automatically let more balls in. So when you're playing, you may hear that noise. Don't worry about it. That's your machine doing what it's supposed to do, okay? So with a recycler, you don't need a catch basin. Uh, the balls and exit the machine down here and this tray was designed for, um, this is something I had a friend make up. This is not something that I, I have any of, uh, but a box similar to this size so that when you did go to the open position, it would, they dump out and they would fill up this box, okay? But on a, on a day to day usage, you don't need to catch the balls because they don't come out the back of a recycler. Okay, that looks pretty good. Put a hand here. Now this has uh, three tulips, uh, two, two what I would call normal Nisogen tulips, kind of a special Nisogen design tulip, and two good sized pay pockets, uh, middle attraction and the center attraction. And the center attraction is set up so that if the ball goes right down the middle, oops, come on. Okay, if the ball goes down the middle, it opens the center tulip. And then if it goes down here, or here, or here, or here, in other words, on the sides, it will open the tulip on the corresponding side, like that, okay? And the uh, payout comes out here. You can see the jackpot chamber tip in here, and the winning ball actually drops down to the, the lower tray. So now that it's loaded up, we'll launch some balls. Now what you're hearing there is this tray is getting full so the overflow is going down here, okay? That's normal. So that's the Nisogen Model A. Hope you like it. And stay tuned for more videos.